This is 15 Minutes of Freedom. I'm your host, Ryan Adell, and today's episode is a new way to consume your coffee. Today's episode, I'm going to share with you some valuable information that will change the way that you feel by simply altering your state of what's possible with the magic of coffee. So there's a good chance as you listen to this, the majority of the Americans here drink coffee. Now I've shared openly, coffee hasn't been something that I've necessarily found value in throughout my life. I don't love the taste. I don't love the consistency. I don't inherently love to drink warm things. But yet, there seems to be this ritualistic effect that coffee has on most of the people that I know, including, but not limiting, my wife. And so over time, right, biohacking, getting into this bulletproof lifestyle, as we'll call it, trying to decrease inflammation, increase mitochondria function and efficiency, helping my body produce easy water, right, that... that viscous material around the membranes of our cells and our mitochondria. I've started consuming coffee. Right? Maybe not coffee quite like you drink it. It would be put it in a blender and put some butter in it and some Cylon cinnamon, a little bit of brain octane. Right? I have this thing that I would do. And it's palatable for me. Make 16 ounces of it and I chug it down very, very quickly. But oddly enough, Today is not about the way that we drink coffee. No, no, no. Today is about the value and benefits of coffee enemas. Yes, yes, you, you heard me right. Coffee enemas. So in there's, if there's some chance you don't know exactly what an enema is, I don't blame you. I have never had one before. But from my very basic and archaic understanding... Essentially, imagine putting some sort of suppository in your rectum, for most appropriate terms to be used, having some sort of liquid go into your rectum, removing the suppository, squeezing your sphincter closed, holding it for a period of time, and then releasing. Yes, my friends, that is an enema. And you might be thinking now, well, how in the world or why in the world would I ever want to consider putting coffee in a hole that's so statistically used for only things to come out of it? I couldn't help but think the same thing. You see, I have a good friend named Bryce Prescott. Bryce is one of the first guests on this show. Bryce and I have become now very close friends. He has two podcasts right now on in iTunes. Rules of Success, or I'm sorry, The Daily Rule, and Drop the Mic are his two podcasts. I'd heavily encourage you to go listen to him. He's an incredible comedian out of Salt Lake City that, mark my words, three years from now, two years from now, he will be on the road touring as a comic. He is truly mastering that craft. You see, Bryce, in some of our early conversations, he said, man, I'm going to have to let you go. So why in the world do you have to let me go? Ah oh, man, I'm doing some stuff. It's, I just got to let you go. Well, oh, okay. So we'd hang up and he'd call me back half hour later. I'm like, man, is everything all right? That was pretty abrupt. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I just had some stuff to do. Well, I don't know about you, but anytime a friend of mine has said something like that, I know there's something underneath there that now I can't help but pick at. Like, I really want to know what's going on. So, but I let it pass. I let it slide. A couple weeks later, almost the same thing happens. But this time, I throw up a roadblock and say, wait, time out. You said this stuff before. You had to rush off the phone in a hurry. We're in the middle of a conversational flow. Can I know what's going on? Like, is everything okay? It's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm kind of in an intimate situation. Well, I'm a guy. I'm not afraid to be a little crass. I'm thinking, man, what, you just going to the bathroom? And so, of course, I say that out loud. Bryce. I've heard somebody use the restroom before, both number one and number two, neither one of which bothers me in the slightest capacity. He laughs and as a chuckle, he goes, well, it's kind of like number two, except it's not really at all like number two. Like, well, what, what the hell are you talking about? He then proceeds to walk me through the fact he's laying on his side, on his bathroom floor, getting ready to partake in what would, would be described as a coffee enema. 
Now, I'm an open-minded guy. I don't have some sort of weird visualization of what he's doing in his bathroom. But now I'm very, very curious as to what the benefits are. In this conversation, of course, I let him go. Right? I say, hey, you, know, you handle your business. I'll be curious to talk to you later about what this really is. So in our daily or bi-daily or now maybe bi-weekly phone conversation, eventually comes around and says, you got to fill me in on this coffee enema. What is this? He goes, oh, man, it's just the most incredible thing you could do for yourself. Right? Like it's, it's so freeing. It's so liberating. It's like you, you feel the most euphoric sense of cleanliness you've ever experienced before. Now, mind you, Bryce is a comedian with an incredible wit and sense of humor, as well as an impeccable timing for delivery. So the way he described it, which was much better and more compelling than I just did. He proceeds to tell me, he's very open about this, that at some point there was, I believe, a bout of testicular cancer in his life. And he had to have one of his testicles removed, something that happens to some of us men. And during that time and protocol, his doctor, his treating physician, his cancer specialist, recommended consistent coffee enemas. Now, from the perception of the reality that I had when he shared this with me, I thought it was complete witchcraft. I laughed because I trust him, right? It's worked for him. He's cancer-free. He's enjoying the, the benefits of what he would call his speed bag, which is the one testicle that hangs very symmetrically between his legs. I say this all to encourage you to go listen to Drop the Mic. It's it's all on his podcast. It's very funny. And so he starts sharing the health benefits, but I'm not able to fully receive them, right? I don't believe this to be possible. I think it's just something that provides him solace and comfort. And so I listen. I eventually, you know, a couple weeks pass, and I'm a little more curious. Right? That seed has been planted to my subconscious, and I'm very curious about what's going on. I asked for how I would do one. And, you know, he sends me a kid, I believe, and these things happen, go back and forth. And I hear and I listen, but I don't fully digest it. Again, for me, it wasn't that he was not an incredible orator of explaining exactly what it was and why I should do it, but I wasn't ready to be open to what that really meant. It was not on him, it was on me. And then we fast forward to this weekend. Large span in time here. We're probably talking four or five months have passed. Maybe more, maybe less, but more than a handful of days or weeks. I'm having a conversation with Taylor Sappington. Taylor is the naturopathic, holistic, incredible woman that has completely altered the state of my body and physical appearance. She's the one that has guided me through this I would say 21-day detox. I'm only on day 14. But I've shed the inflammation from my, my body, from my face, from my stomach, from my abdomen, from my joints, from my hands. Right? I'm a completely different feeling individual. It's a protocol that she walks people through. That's a 21-day cycle. Then there's additional things that come afterwards. Right? But she not only was a client of mine, but now she's a friend. And I refer clients to her. And we're working on some collaborated efforts together. Well, we're having a quick catch up as far as like here I sit and I feel better than I've ever felt before. And I believe I'm going to truly honor and adopt this new way of eating, this new lifestyle, realizing that I'm carb sensitive and more of a vegan based lunch and spending long windows of time fasting. Maybe some red meat midday, some seafood more towards the night, minimizing carbs only in the middle meal. And we're bouncing ideas back and forth and. She's very upbeat and positive about all the changes and just the excitement. And somehow, the conversation takes a pretty hard right turn into coffee enemas. I'm not going to pick up my phone and recount exactly how we got there, but nonetheless, we did arrive. And upon arriving at coffee enemas, coming from someone that specializes in you know, the way the body works, not to discredit Bryce, but maybe I was just more open to receiving in that moment. She instantly sends me a link to Amazon for a coffee enema kit. Well, it's a $34 kit. I'm a quick start, right? You don't have to sell me twice. Click it, Amazon Prime, buy it. It'll be here Tuesday. This was on Sunday. Here we are on Monday. I'll have it tomorrow. 
Then we go back and forth. Right now I'm in, incredibly intrigued. I have no idea how to do this. My perception is somehow I'm going to take coffee grounds and put them somewhere where the sun doesn't shine and magically that's going to heal all my ailments. My, come to find out that's not exactly what you do. So I ask her, what's the protocol? How does this work? And she proceeds to tell me you should put some towels down in the bathroom. You lay on your side. You would have taken a couple tablespoons of coffee grounds. You would have heated them up in water. You would use a French press. You would then pour out the coffee, making sure there's no grounds left behind. That threw me for a loop. I was convinced I was putting the whole thing in my rectum, which we, her and I laughingly had a conversation about of how there's plenty of needs to exfoliate various places, but there's probably not a need to exfoliate that part of our body. So the grounds, as you would imagine, would act like sandpaper. Probably not a good thing for you and I. And so upon laying on your side, having this coffee that's now filtered warm, but not too warm, you got to fill it up with a couple cups of cold water. Lay on your side, you lubricate the tube, you put the tube again as where you can imagine one would put this enema tube. You turn on the nozzle, which allows gravity to pour the solution into the dark areas of our bodies. Shut off the nozzle, let it sit in there slowly pull the tube out and pinch everything shut. Now the goal is to somehow be able to sit there for 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes laying on your side on the bathroom floor, holding yourself together for lack of a better term. Now here's where she said, watch me, watch me here. Here's where she said, the shit gets tricky. Eventually, you're going to have to go from laying on your side to the vertical position to get onto a toilet. That's why she recommended putting the towels down. There's going to be a point in time where things could get a little spicy. You might lose control of what most of us take for granted. Our ability to determine when and where we go to the bathroom. Upon sitting down on the toilet and relieving yourself... You've gotten rid of all types of bacteria from, from inside your digestive tract and your colon and your liver and name all these amazing places. And now you might be thinking, well, why in the world would anybody want to do this? You know, you into some sort of sadistic stuff, some sort of masochist? Well, my answer, of course, is no, that's not my thing. But what ends up happening is by the time you excrete what comes out of you, the bile and all the various things that could be in there, you are left with as much as a 700% glutathione dump. Now, don't take dump in the physical sense of going to the bathroom. The dump ends up being your body's natural ability to drop into your system the glutathione. If there's a chance that you were like I was quite some time ago and didn't understand what glutathione is, it's the body's master antioxidant. It's the thing that fights off diseases, keeps us healthy, keeps our digestive system clean, keeps you know, all the gut microbiomes and flora kind of in line and regulated. It's the most powerful thing that we could consume that most of us don't even know about. Sure, there's oral forms of it as there would be anything, but this is a way to have your body naturally produce it in a rapid succession and heal yourself from the inside out. All of this from black coffee that the majority of us have inside of our house, a $34 concoction and contraption from Amazon, and 25 minutes of your time and some mild, mild discomfort. Now, I was shocked when I heard the specific nature of how this works and the health benefits, and then I felt almost ignorant for doubting and questioning Bryce and thinking this was just some ritualistic endeavor that he embarks upon based off of what his doctor had told him he'd be successful with. There's a tremendous amount of research that backs into why one should honor and consider a coffee enema. So I sit in this position, really what will be two days out from my first coffee enema, because the kit will come in tomorrow, and I don't believe I'll do one tomorrow evening, but I most certainly will do one Wednesday morning. There'll be some sort of updated episode that launches, Describing this in a little more detail. 
But all I can say from now is, I would encourage you to keep an open mind to what is possible for everything that we eat and digest. As I've been chasing this rabbit for the past two or three weeks specifically as it pertains to optimizing and even weaponizing my health and functionality, I can tell you the level of understanding and what I accept to be possible is vastly superior to what it was just three or four weeks ago. I feel better. I have more energy. My skin is more clear. My digestion is more on track. And my body is in better shape than it's ever been by simply focusing on intuitive eating and what works for me. I would love to have an additional conversation with you about this exact topic. Completely honest, use this as a Trojan horse and as some sort of coaching with you. If not with me, introduce you to Taylor, who will take you from point A to point Z in ways you didn't even know existed. If you have any interest in more information in this or connecting with Taylor herself, Taylor's, of course, on Instagram and Facebook, and she's actually in the Life Optimization Group herself. Inside of Facebook, just type in Life Optimization Group. Go ahead and add yourself. I'll approve you. Then message her as soon as you hop in. If not, pop me an email over to ryan at lifeoptimizationgroup.com, and I'll be happy to forward on your information. She is not just selling pills, potions, and lotion. She actually doesn't sell any of that. She has tens of years of knowledge and hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in clinical practices, accreditations, and certifications that give her an insight into how our bodies work in a way that most people don't have any conception of understanding. And from a place of understanding what could be possible for you, if you reach out to me or you decide to do research on your own, I promise that the days after you acquire this new knowledge, you will literally be able to get shit done.